Sustainability is firmly on the global business agenda, but China offers a unique perspective that could soon make it a global imperative. And I'm talking to Joe Oliver of We Impact to find out more. Joe Oliver, you're with We Impact. First of all, I'm very intrigued because um, I don't think your Mandarin's that good, and yet you have a company that's based in Beijing. So tell us all about it. Uh, yeah, I work with a team of 10 people, all of whom can speak fluent Chinese, except for myself. And I'm going to be learning, I've learned a little bit survival Chinese, but I'm going to be learning soon. And so doing business in China is not just a challenge because it's doing business in China, but for me, it's also a language barrier. So that's definitely the case. But uh, three years in and we're going strong. And so uh, I have a feeling that once I do get the hang of it, it'll get even better. So now tell us about your organization. Uh, we Impact is an organization that works kind of like an innovation agency and we, are, we have the mandate of introducing and promoting and nurturing and developing the concept of sustainable lifestyles here in China. That goes from uh, looking at what, how government policies affect everyday individuals but also how businesses and how say third sector in, uh, organizations can be involved in this movement. Um, pre pre predominantly we aim for engaging businesses because they are the driving force in China and that's how things are evolving in terms of the market. The session that you've uh, been delivering uh, is essentially questioning uh, whether sustainability actually uh, is profit-based, is, uh, you know, is practical uh, or is it simply just an ideology. Um, I kind of guess kind of which side you're going to be on but um, you know, give us your views on that. I think that obviously everything has to start with a slight dream or an, uh, an aspiration to be different. And currently sustainability is a new paradigm that's been introduced into the meetings industries predominantly in the last 10 years and definitely formally in the last few. Um, that means globally. In China as well, um, the government here are very, very much uh, concerned and legitimately so about environmental issues, particularly around air, water and food safety. Um, sustainability in China is an environmental context. It's not really about the social or economic. However, the government here are looking at how they can create what's, what they've termed as an ecological civilization. So the implications of that are not immediate, but long term, when you look at society here, it will make drastic and fundamental changes to business, to individuals' lives in a positive way. Um, how that's valued in terms of the, say, the, the bottom line is a good question because ultimately I think globally people are getting around their, their heads around this concept of what, what is known as new metrics. And uh, this has occurred because people realize that the bottom line just through accounting or economic measurement um, fundamentally doesn't take into account many externalities that occur through uh, measuring one type of outcome. In China, you also have many other outcomes that are not just economic, but also environmental and social. Uh, for instance, China is losing roughly about 4% of its natural capital in terms of its resource value per year on year. That's a very big effect that's going to happen you know, for generations to come. So when you start to look at how people are measuring many different uh, metrics as such, and including things like happiness and well-being, health, education, you start to move away from GDP and you look at things that really try and take in the whole of a society and I think that that's what the Chinese government's trying to do. How that's valued in terms of economic sense is still yet to, yet to be defined but I know that people are working on it and I know that globally this is a big concern and a big, a big um, challenge for us all. When you look at uh, business here in terms of sustainability consumption or consumption of sustainability in, in general um, you have about 53 percent of the population who are um, who would actually pay 5 to 10 percent more for an ecological project product and that product has to be around generally health uh, concerns so that's about how does it affect your health that's why air water and food are the most key are the key components here and those are basically the things that we need to survive so in China it's a very bit different challenge about what is sustainability it's, it's a fundamental survival as opposed to many countries where it's kind of like we're already fine but wouldn't it be nice to make this more green the other thing to, to realize is that um, events in the meeting industry have a big role to play in that in terms of introducing new concepts, especially international concepts, to China. Um, we recently did the Shanghai Eco F Design Fair where we had 12,000 people come. We did a full audit in terms of their purchasing and we found that 80, nearly 89% of people who, who had attended were more likely to purchase green products after having attended. Not only that, 93% of people said that they would act greener. 
which is incredible. And that's an event. That's because of the event, and it's not because of some sort of government policy. It's, it's directly led through the people and by people and organized by people. It just shows the effectiveness of uh, uh, sort of live face-to-face -face communication to the Chinese population, which is really fascinating. I think that China's perspective, or let's put it at their position, is very interesting because in the next 15 years, uh, I think China is going to slightly rewrite its direction. And if it can do that in terms of what it's aiming to do as an ecological civilization, we will find some very amazing new ways of approaching the world and, and approaching governance, but also people's lifestyles. And when you look at every single, uh, every single international um, country and area, even just areas that have been through industrialization, afterwards comes cons a consumption era, basically. And that's what China's entering. Um, with the rise of the middle class, with the new wealth um, that's been created through industrialization in China, there is now the ability to purchase things. And if they make the choices to be, uh, you know, purchasing things which are closed loop items, things that can be uh, fundamentally sustainable, not just in terms of being recycled or these kind of things, then, then they will shift not only the patterns within China, but the patterns of consumption, the patterns of lifestyles globally. And I think that there's a window to do that. And I think that the Chinese youth and young people who are going to be in charge in 15 years time are open and interested and curious and able to do this. And I think that's different from the West. I think that's very different from uh, countries which are already, let's say, locked into their paradigm. And here things are changing so quickly and so amazingly that there is the possibility that this can happen. And why not make that effort, everyone, to drive that forwards? Fascinating stuff, Joe. Thank you very much for talking to me. Thank you very much, Ian.